morning ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another lovely sunny day out on the shore. My name is Aaron and today we're going to be out for a bit of a coastal forage. We're also going to be exploring some rock pools, hopefully finding some crabs and some lobsters. Fingers crossed we do. But just wanted to explain to you a few things before we get into everything. We've got a couple hours left of the ebb before we get to low tide. So in the meantime, we're going to go and have a look at some of the rock pools that have recently been exposed. We'll lift up some rocks and see what other wildlife and creatures we can find underneath for you all. Hopefully you'll enjoy this journey with me, but first note on safety, if you're ever out on the coast, exploring, foraging, anything like that by yourself, please make sure you stay as safe as possible. For myself, my wife knows where I am. I have a pre-arranged contact time with her as well. So if anything does happen, then she'll know to call somebody or try and get hold of me is of utmost importance so that you stay safe. Make sure somebody knows where you are if you're solo. Make sure you have a pre-arranged contact time with them. And again, be careful with your footing. Seaweed can be very slippery as my poor posterior knows all too well. Okay guys, here we have a couple of anemones. As you can see, this one in here, these are actually strawberry anemones. This one has its tentacles out. These actually have stinging cells called nematocysts. And what they'll do if a little shrimp or fish or something like that swims by, it will get caught in the tentacles and stung and paralyzed. And then it will drag it into the middle and feed on it. And if I can lift this one out as it's attached to the rock, you'll see as soon as it comes out the water, it will just instantly withdraw the tentacles into the middle. And that's to help preserve all the water in there so it doesn't dry out. If we put it back in, as soon as we put it back in, you can see that the tentacles have come back out. We'll try and get some better examples of uh, some nicer ones because they actually have really nice iridescent green spots on them. So I've just lifted over this rock here though guys. That's an anemone and some painted top shells. But down here we have couple of hermit crabs hiding away in there. Let's get them out. I'll put them up there for a sec. Might be able to get a better shot of them in a moment. And a slightly bigger one just here. That one's hiding away in there. Oh, he's escaping already. Let's put them down. When they start to feel safe, they'll come out and then they'll run away to hide. interesting thing about hermit crabs there guys is when they actually outgrow their shells they'll come up onto the shell there's another one just going under there i'll put this rock back over yeah interesting little thing about hermit crabs is when they outgrow the current shells that they're in they'll come up onto the shoreline to find empty ones and then they'll um evacuate the home that they're currently in find a new bigger shell and take over that one until they outgrow that all right there guys hopefully you can see down there underneath this rock we have a nice little fish Let's see if we can move it without spooking him too much and see what we've got we can get a better look at him from here come here little fella oh this is how this will go the way he goes hidden over there now this rock back there he is pretty camouflaged in as you can see all right there guys hopefully the GoPro will pick up the coloration all right but just down there we have a nice big strawberry anemone it has beautifully big iridescently green spots Right there, ladies and gents, here, looks like we've had one caught out from the tide. We have a xanthro crab. Other names for them are pie crusts or furrowed crabs. You can see, I like to take a nice aggressive sort of back away or I will pinch you stance and their claws. 
and that's my hand right next to it or my finger shall I say are pretty big for such a small little crab they will give you a rather nasty little nip just to tell you to back off and leave me alone yeah let's see if we can just get you out of that seaweed if you'll come they really do cling on to the rocks and seaweed with their back legs pretty well I don't want to hurt the little guy let's see can we get you off without getting nipped there we go and this one is actually a male They have nice little purple colorations underneath. You can tell it's a male from that little notch in the middle there. And it's quite narrow and long. The female ones are more like the shape of a D and they're much more broader. Let's put you back in some water so the seagulls don't get you. There you go, little guy. And away he goes. Well, it looks like we have another weight to add to the collection. What we'll do with these is whenever I find them is I take them off the shore because I don't want them to pollute the water and I'll um, dispose of them correctly when I get back home. All right there ladies and gents, here we have a creature I've not actually come across before so I'm not sure what it is. Not sure if it's some form of worm or if it's the back end of some form of um, sea cucumber or the like. I know there are some species that will uh, hide in the rocks and they'll fan their back end out to catch food, etc. But no. If any of you guys know what this one is, please leave a comment down below and let me know. In here we have what looks like to be the remains, or maybe even a molted shell of a velvet swimmer. Ooh. Yeah, so this would be actually quite a rather nice size velvet swimming crab, but this would be the molted remains actually. Would that be in the gills there? That was probably actually an eaten one. So yeah, you can see the size of the claws. It would have been on these guys. Now, these guys are normally pretty aggressive and they get their name Velvet Swimmer because if you touch them they're very velvety and the uh, back legs are designed for swimming along. But yeah, obviously just a word to the wise again if you ever come across something like this you never want to forage it unless it's alive you don't want to make yourself ill at all. But yeah, we'll get it back in and let the uh, wildlife finish eating it. Hopefully you can see him right over there. We have what looks like to be a cormorant basking in the sun. Also probably waiting to try and catch its dinner as well for any stray crabs that haven't quite hidden yet. Alright there guys. Just left over this rock and what we have here is a brittle star actually missing part of his leg. Get this back 
taken down that. And here we have another, hopefully you can see it, bigger broadcloth porcelain crab. As well as these white things here. They're called keel worms. They actually create a calcium carbonate shell around themselves, which is actually very hard. Okay, ladies and gents, we have here what looks like to be the unfortunate remains of a brown edible crab. There. You can see the size of the claws on this thing. It's quite solid as well, which is a shame. R.I.P. little guy. But yep. Yeah. I just wanted to talk quickly about when you find things like this. So, first of all, whenever you're foraging out on the shoreline for any form of crustaceans or seaweed or anything like that, please make sure you check your local area to make sure that you are picking things up that is within your bylaw. So for myself down in Cornwall, for a brown edible crab such as this, a male one would have to be 160 millimetres from the longest part of the shell, or 16 centimetres, and a female would have to be 150 millimeters or 15 centimeters. This guy is well in, it's something like that sort of size. Or sorry, well out, should I say? But anyway, on another note, whenever you find something that's dead, you never want to take it. You have no idea how long something like this has been rotting there for, and it could make, make you extremely poorly. Only ever take stuff that's fresh, and the same goes for seaweed as well. If you find any seaweed, you only want stuff that would be attached. You never want to take any stuff like this that would be detached again you don't know how long this has been detached for and how long it potentially could have been rotting so please make sure you only take something that is fresh to save yourself a very upset stomach because i'm sure nobody wants to be on the loo at all for a few days it's not pleasant what i have here guys looks like somebody's been fishing whole string of mackerel feathers with some weights on what i'll do because I don't like leaving rubbish on the beach, is I'll um, pick this up, find where the end of all this goes, and I'll take as much of the wire as I can with me, and then pop it in the bin. Right there, ladies and gents, we've got a lovely gully here. This is the sort of place where you might be able to find spider crabs once they start coming in next month. Along the overhangs, actually, well, it's not a spider crab, right down there. Let's see if we can get a bit of a closer look while being safe. Hopefully you guys can see it well. We have a sea star. See if we can grab him and have a closer look. Alright, well, we've managed to get him out. Hopefully, the GoPro will capture the colours on it, but on the ends here, they're quite spiny, though it's fine to pick up without any form of glove on. But they're lovely purple colours there, and underneath. Now, these yellowy orange bits what it uses to one move around and two as you can see what's in the middle there they use them to pull their prey into the middle and they like to feed on limpets and the likes and then in the middle underneath there there'll be a little mouth that will be um, slowly eating that poor unfortunate limpet but yeah what a lovely cracker of a find I'll keep him up too long we'll get him back in there now Put him on his rock. There's a one, two. We'll put him down there. There we go. And away he goes. for crabs and lobsters there guys these are the sorts of 
gullies underneath ledges and things like this running up that crabs like to hide to escape the tide when it's going out so we'll have a look down and see if we can find anything at all He's not playing ball, doesn't want to come out. Move him out. Nope. Gotta be very careful if we do try to ease him out. Obviously, we don't want to damage him at all. Look for the water to second, settle a second. himself in there pretty good. I don't think we're going to be able to get him out unfortunately. No. I'll we'll let him go. We'll leave him for another day. But yeah, this is exactly what we're looking for. He's just uh, decided to wedge himself in there pretty good and thorough. Right after I uh, stopped filming, he decided to try and pop out a little bit. So see if we can get him out and have a look. Look carefully. Maybe you can grab onto this here. Come on, you. you want to do this carefully because you don't want to damage him. Sealed his own fate from getting out. Now, obviously, this one is way too small to keep. And I've been calling it a he, but it's actually a female. Be down there a second. This pad here is how you can determine whether they're male or female. When it's a large pad like that, that is female, male ones would have much smaller and narrower ones. Alright, then, with it, let's put you back in there. she goes back into a hidey hole that's exactly what I mean when we are looking for crabs and lobsters and things like that so continuing our quest just exploring down and around these gullies we'll show you another couple examples of what crabs and other crustaceans like here hopefully you will be able to see it let's see if we can get in right down here 
another small brown edible crab. We'll leave them alone, they're obviously far too small to keep anyway. Continue down. Just got to mind my footing. Then, you be able to see it, right down the back there, there's another small brown edible crab. And that's exactly what I like to do. When the tide goes out, as you can see, it's dropped a lot now. Not too long ago, 10 15 minutes, the water level was right up in here. But yeah, they like to um, hide themselves away. So, the ideal places to look if you're uh, foraging for something a bit bigger as well, or you just want to have a little explore around. And then, we'll have a look see down here. I hope this has been exposed. As you can see, something has had a go. Looks like there's a uh, smaller brown edible crab in there. This here has been freshly dug up. Alright there guys, here we have another prime example of what crabs like to do. Just in the back down there, you might be able to pick him out. There's a furrow crab. I'm not going to disturb him, but I just wanted to show you what they generally tend to do. All this here, all this material is freshly dug out sand, and what they'll do is they'll kick out all the sand and go bury themselves in there to get deeper in to help avoid themselves getting eaten from predators. So yeah, when you are looking in the uh, bigger nooks and crannies, this is a sort of telltale sign that you'll be looking for as well. It's a dead giveaway for uh, finding crabs and lobsters. All right there, ladies and gents. As you can see, right down the back there, there is a brown edible crab. Do. So scrape some of this out. And set the GoPro up. And hopefully we can uh, get this crab extracted and get you guys a closer look. Mr. Crab, you are at a very awkward angle. And dig some of this away. I don't think. Again guys, we just want to be careful here, I don't want to harm the crab in any way, shape or form. They do have very tough shells, but it's more about not wanting to break off any of their limbs. Uh, not going to play ball today, are ya? Right, there we go. We've got this one out. Sorry I couldn't capture that, it was too much of a pain to uh, try and have the GoPro down there in one hand and do it with the other. And this one here is female. You can tell this one's female because of this big pad down the bottom there. Pop it down on her back a sec. She's far too small to keep, but this pad here denotes it as being female and that's where she'll keep her eggs. Ooh, let's turn her over, pick her up, we won't keep you long Missy, you can see she's got one claw that is smaller than the other. Fascinating thing about crabs and crustaceans is they can actually shed their legs and claws to escape predators etc or if they feel threatened but they'll grow them back. So in a couple of sheds that claw there will probably be the same size as the other one. Uh, if you stay there for a sec, Missy. So, this one is way too small. They need to be probably another couple of inches before she would be a keepable crab. But how you measure it is from the side of the shell to the other side of the shell. 
and the female crabs for edible brown crabs in my area would be 150 mil or 15 centimeters males oh, I should a little pad coming up will be 160 mil or 16 centimeters yeah what we'll do is we'll get her back in a hole and she can go back in that and go and live to fight another day go back in there missy back in you go there you go and she's just gone straight back in her hole like nothing ever happened okay ladies and gents here we have another crab another brown edible crab smaller female one this one here the GoPro will pick it up it's fairly translucent she has recently peeled and shed her shell she's it's very soft on the top and underneath here it's very very squishy and this is why especially with crabs in caves and holes and stuff like that and lobsters we don't want to go just jamming anything in and trying to rip things out because if they're soft like this you're just going to break them apart really easily what i'll do is i'll get her back under the rock and let her carry on with her day well ladies and gents that is my time down at the shore done for today i hope you have enjoyed joining me on my little adventure roaming around the shoreline down here and finding all those amazing little creatures and remember if you find any value in this video if you've enjoyed it at all please hit that like button press subscribe and ring that notification bell to get any updates from future videos and posts from myself and remember when you are down by the shore please always make sure that you stay safe know what the tide's doing if you're solo make sure somebody knows where you are and you have a pre-arranged contact time and remember from my adventure to yours stay safe and have a good day